guest today is Dino Esposito. How are you, Dino? Fine, thank you. I'm Welcome Dino Esposito. Es Dino Esposito, the American what? way. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> we're, not in, we're in Italy now. No. Dino Esposito is the Italian European way. Dino Esposito, that's the American way, only for American friends. Actually, that's the Canadian way. <laughs> oh, the Canadian <laughs> way. <laughs> because of the famous uh, brothers, the hockey players. Hockey player uh, brothers, yeah. yeah. I, I know the story. <laughs> Um, we were talking earlier about uh, responsive web design, of which you are not a fan. Absolutely no. But I have a great deep respect for responsive web design, but uh, the, it drives me crazy when I see responsive web design. Let, let's, let's start by just defining what is responsive oh, web okay, design. Oh, okay, what is responsive web design? It's essentially a combination of uh, web-oriented techniques uh, uh, aimed at... Uh, making the HTML content adapt to the size of the host browser window. Okay. So this happens uh, uh, through concrete techniques like uh, CSS media queries. So the browser ability to switch on the fly CSS uh, has the size of the host window uh, changes beyond uh, defined breakpoints. So if it gets larger than 400 pixels, picks up a different CSS. Okay. When it gets larger than 800 pixels, it picks up another one and so forth. Okay, so you got things like a, a table with four columns if it's this wide. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. maybe if it gets shrunk down, like on a, on a tablet, it'll only be two columns, and maybe on a phone, it will only be one column. Yes, something like that. Yes, something like that, exactly. So uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, CSS media queries uh, force you to have uh, a fixed breakpoints. So if you have a one at 400 and one at, uh, one at 800 and the, the browser window is a 600, so what do you do? Uh, in addition to make that, to ensure that the, the HTML renders well, uh, whatever is the browser window size, uh, uh, other techniques like proportional fonts, uh, proportional sizes, uh, a grid-based uh, um, a grid-based uh, layout, uh, layout uh, help significantly in uh, reaching these kind of goals. So it works beautifully. Yeah, it sounds ver perfectly reasonable. What, what is yeah. the problem with that? The problem is not with responsive web design per se, which is great, but responsive web design was essentially devised to work on desktop. Hmm. So it is uh, such a smart kind of thing that it could be adapted effectively to work also on mobile devices. Because when we, when we talk about uh, uh, a window, browser window 400 uh, pixels wide, uh, we can be talking about uh, a very small, tiny browser window on a desktop or the full screen browser window on a smartphone. Hmm, but okay. it's, okay, the size of the window is the same. Yep. Uh, the rendering you get can be acceptable on both uh, uh, devices because it, it takes into account the, the, the screen width. Mm -hmm. The problem is that, however, to restrict a page to 400 pixel uh, takes you to flow things around, to move blocks and divs around, mm -hmm. to hide a lot of them. And this happens regardless of the actual device. So it's okay to download three megs of of a full size HTML of a page, and CSS, CSS and scripts, scripts, whatever, images. on a desktop mm -hmm. PC to display only 400 pixel window, but on a smartphone, is it okay to download three megs just to hide things? Oh, I see, because a smartphone typically has a much smaller bandwidth. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, and people pay for that bandwidth generally. People pay for the bandwidth, but also it consumes power because, yep. okay, yeah, it, Smartphones are getting more, more and more powerful, but they are still not as powerful. Right. powerful These are limitations that we just don't think about when we're on the desktop. Anymore. We don't think about that, yeah. And this is the point. So mobile, um, so responsive web design is great, but it's not specifically mobile friendly. It's not mobile first. Uh -huh. And it's being perceived, it's being pushed like that. Hmm. With the uh, following the idea that, oh, I want to be smart. I'm a developer, so I'm smart. Because if, you are, if I'm a developer, I have to be smart. And because I'm smart, I'm so smart that I don't want to write multiple views or multiple pages. I just want to write one HTML-based website and have it ready on a variety of devices of today and tomorrow. Yeah, yeah but that uh, sounds the reasonable cost. Also. Yeah, sounds <laughs> reasonable, but the cost is that you are not optimizing anything right. for specific devices. Okay. So what's... Uh, uh, what's the solution? What's the a better way, in your opinion? My challenge is uh, showing that there is uh, an equally effective way 
so equally effective in the sense that it doesn't ask you to build, to rewrite multiple websites, one for tablets, one for smartphones, and one for, I don't know, Xbox large screens. But just using ASP.NET MVC uh, native capabilities combined with uh, an external additional library, uh, you can detect easily and quickly and effectively uh, what are the capabilities of the requesting user agent and then based on that intelligently serve appropriate markup. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the ASP.NET backend, it means having instead of just one Razor file per page, mm -hmm. You're gonna have multiple Razor files per page. So index.desktop.razor, mm -hmm. index.tablet, index.smartphone, and as many as uh, wow. uh, it, it can be reasonable to have uh, given the target, the expectation uh, of your website. The next step is uh, who's gonna do the routing? Who is, uh, where is the component that detects? capabilities of the user right. agent and so this, decides. There will be some sort of a service in between the controller and the view that's going to and say the great news, which, view to, which view to serve up. Yes, and the great news is that this is already native in ASP.NET MVC 4 and 5 hmm. and newer versions also. It's called display mode introduced with MVC 4. And this is, I think, the only serious business-oriented reason to ever consider upgrading from MVC 3. Hmm, okay. I couldn't care less of Web API or, or the other little things like, you know, minification. These are a Web API and minification that can be achieved regardless of MVC 4. Okay. The only reason why I do recommend, and I personally upgraded myself to MVC 4, is display modes. Hmm. Because I, I had the chance of writing myself display modes in MVC 3. Well, it takes a while and, uh, well, it's not as effective my implementation as the Microsoft Swan is in MVC 4. So I encourage people to look into display modes. And with display modes, essentially, essentially you define a nickname, so a string, so the, 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 the suffix that you use to characterize razor views for a particular device. And you associate a Boolean expression to each of these uh, nicknames to say, okay, I'm a smartphone, and I'm a smartphone when this Boolean condition evaluates to true. So it's all about what kind of logic you put into the Boolean expression. And this introduces the second aspect of, uh, of the overall server-side uh, device detection solution. You probably need a library, some sort of external service that tells you, starting from a user agent, which are the known capabilities of that device, of the device that carries that user agent. Okay. So if you get something like Mozilla, blah, 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 and that is an iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, this server-side library will tell you, it picks up the uh, user agent string and returns you some uh, capabilities. Okay, this is an iPhone, this is the operating system, this device is known to be able to play streaming, but only 3GPP, but only MOV, but only MP4, and so forth. This supports HTML5, this supports the CSS media queries, this supports this and that. So I want to make sure I understand here that you're not suggesting that we should have different views for every possible agent, Absolutely user not. agent, but we should have maybe different views for combinations of features? No, I would say the most common way of, of, of approaching things is, okay, you want to have a, a different website for smartphones, for tablets, okay. for, uh, I don't know what, for larger screens, okay. or maybe for iPhones and Androids operating systems. Okay. Okay, you decide how many different views you want to okay. have. But not and for then, every different Android device. No, so no, 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 no. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that. I'm okay. saying classes of devices, typically smartphone, tablets, okay. and that's it, and desktop. So, and you can recognize and capabilities of, and then once we have that view, then our, our, the view itself would be smart enough to say, okay, this particular device supports streaming video. Yeah, exactly. And therefore, we'll modify yeah, yeah, the view yeah, 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 based yeah, exactly. on whether or not it supports that. Absolutely. So there are libraries like this. Which is, which is kind of responsive, not so much in size, but in features. Yeah, it's re exactly. It's a still a way of being responsive. Yeah, it's a, I like to call this a responsive experience towards a responsive design. Okay. Uh, responsive experience also because uh, now we are focusing, so far we focused on... Uh, uh, looking at uh, how we lay out HTML. Right. And for the most part, I've, I've seen responsive web design being used with uh, uh, portals. 
So read only sites. But mm. imagine now a website that has to expose things like a wizard, um, a booking procedure. So things that you can put forms, okay, that you can put by extension, you know, in, in a wide desktop screen that is kind of hard to squeeze in, 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 a, in a smartphone view and that maybe to work effectively on a smartphone we will, may require different pages and different steps. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, by choosing server-side responsive experience, well, you just create a different Razor files uh, okay. uh, that is picked up on a smartphone and picked up on tablet, but uh, once picked up on a smartphone, it gives you a completely different experience yeah, and allows you, to have, uh, allows you to have a different use cases also. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So the user will navigate between yeah. uh, pages exactly. very differently. Between, yeah, differently. So uh, you, you don't have this kind of power with responsive web design. Mm, okay. That's it. Responsive experience versus responsive design. Okay, that's uh, those are uh, good things to think about. Yeah. I don't think uh, people are buying into the new hotness. But how do you think that big shots like Google and Facebook do their own magical things on mobile websites? They use a, one of these libraries. The mm. most popular of these libraries is called Vurful. What is it? It's Vurful. W U R F L. Okay. Um, it was originally an open source project, but today you can get. Uh, this as an open source library for open source projects. Otherwise, you need to have a commercial license, uh, and for yeah, typically for uh, commercial solutions, you need to get a license. So it's not free. Okay. Uh, is that a .NET library? It's a, a cross-platform library. I see. It, it is available for Java, for PHP, mm -hmm. for Ruby, for C++, and of course for ASP.NET. Okay. And it comes with a comfortable, easy to use, a NuGet package ah, okay. from for .NET. I see. Yeah. Okay. And I, I encourage you to, to use this library to test. I mean, uh, you, you need to buy the license only when you go uh, in production. So uh, all the debugging is free, free of charge. So there's no reason not to use that one. And it gives you really a different experience when it comes to mobile websites. Okay. Now, I know you're a prolific author. Are you writing about this somewhere that uh, my viewers can read? Yeah, I have. Uh, it was published uh, uh, a year ago, a, b a book, Architecting Mobile Solutions for the Enterprise, uh, where I, there's a chapter on Wurful. There is also a chapter on mobile websites. Uh, there are chapters on iOS, Android, Windows Phone. So just the full spectrum oh, okay. of mobile, uh, the mobile universe, the mobile world, uh, at a glance, and not in depth. So you won't, out of the book, you won't get an expert, a super guru, iOS developer. Mm -hmm. But uh, as an architect, as, oh, as a .NET developer, uh -huh. okay? who, never, who, 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 who never did anything mobile, you get exposure to exactly the minimum kind of things you need to know right. to make decisions and, to, yeah, and, and to, to start becoming a real guru. All right. And you have an online presence as well, right? And Do you have an online presence? Uh, I have an online presence. Uh, it's, uh, it's a blog called the Software Two Cents, uh, WordPress.com. I would have called it Two Cents of Software, but uh, WordPress doesn't allow me to put the number as the first character. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and I wanted it to be number two, so Software Two Cents with the number two, yep. not the, the letters. Yes, and then I'm, I'm on Twitter, I'm Despos. And well, there's, no good, there's no reason not to follow me, actually, I think. <laughs> Dino, thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. Bye.